Good evening and welcome to tonight's Bible study with the Lombard Church of the Nazarene. We're so glad that you joined us tonight. Happy 11th day of Christmas. I know, I know, for many people the lights are down, the trees are put away, um, Christmas is behind us, it's January, and um, not thinking about Christmas anymore. But for many, there are 12 days of Christmas and the Christmas celebration is still going on in many places around the world. For many, today is the 11th day of Christmas. So you're familiar with this song. I most probably, uh, all of you have heard the 12 days of Christmas, uh, where every day a true love gives gifts, and it's an elaborate um, set of gifts that increases in number every day. Uh, it was written down in a book back in 1780, the book is called Mirth Without Mischief, and it was probably uh, a fun game um, or song for kids or even a game where you had to say it all, and if you messed up, you had to give something up, um, a memory kind of game. But for many historians, they believe the song originally um, uh, was in France before transferring it over to England uh, because the partridge was uh, native to France, not to England. Um, it didn't come to England until the 18th century. But anyway, um, it comes back to old English or maybe even French literature. Um, every year for the past 38 years, PNC Bank releases a Christmas price index. And they tally up how much it would cost to get a pear tree and a partridge and two turtle doves and three French hens and so on. Adds it all up and how much it would be. And it would total, they said this year, 2022, around $200,000 if a true love wanted to buy all these things for their loved one. But uh, there are some legends, uh, I say legends because there's no real proof to this, but some thought that when the church was um, uh, kind of underground and couldn't teach publicly and um, the Catholics taught this song or used this song for their catechisms. In other words, each of these 12 things were to help them remind them to remember different things of their faith. The true love was God, and Jesus was the partridge who was in a tree who would one day give up his life for all of mankind to be hung in a tree. So God, the true love, gave his son Jesus the partridge and in a pear tree. And then each of these other numbers were there to remind us of something in our faith. Like um, two turtle doves could be the two testaments, old and new. Uh, the three French hens could be the three gifts of faith. Uh, three gifts of faith, hope, and love. Um, the four could be four gospels. Five, the five books of the Pentateuch or the books of Moses. Six could be the six days of creation. Or seven, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The eight, the Beatitudes. Nine, fruit of the Holy Spirit. Ten, commandments. Eleven, faithful apostles. Or twelve is the twelve points to the Apostles' Creed that everyone was taught. And so some believe that this was a form of catechism, uh, a way to say, okay, you can remember that song, right? Well, then can you remember what these things are? The two testaments the three gifts the and so on but again nobody knows that for sure well like I said happy 11th day of Christmas um, if you went according to the Catholic uh, catechism that would be for the 11 faithful apostles um, these people who follow Jesus who were trained discipled by Jesus who then went, were sent out and spread the good news from Jesus who that news spread around the world starting with these individuals as a day to remember them and who they are do you remember the names of the apostles let's let's uh, do a quick review of that in Luke chapter 6 verses 13 through 16 it says and when the day uh, and when day came he called his disciples and chose from them 12 whom he named apostles Simon who he named Peter and Andrew his brother and James and John and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Simon who was called the Zealot and Judas the son of James and Judas Iscariot who became a traitor. Now do you notice that it begins here by saying out of his disciples. So there were many 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 disciples of Jesus. 
But it says he chose 12 at this point and he called them apostles. Because the scripture is like this, we kind of tend to always imagine Jesus either with a large crowd teaching or just with 12. But he said no, he had multiple disciples. But at one point he takes these 12 and he sends them out. Now the diff- And he calls them apostles. The difference here is the word disciples means followers of Jesus. Apostles are the ones that Jesus sends out. We all, in our spiritual journey, need to become disciples, but also become sent ones, uh, apostles, in a sense, where we are not only just following Jesus, but Jesus wants to use us for his kingdom. He wants us to share the good news. Um, These were not the end of the apostles. Later on, we read Jesus sends out 72 others. And so Jesus wants that as part of our journey with him. Notice at the end here that it says that the last one became a traitor. And so during the Catholic um, catechism, they say 11 faithful apostles, not 12, because 11 became faithful apostles out of those 12 original ones. Um, Judas Iscariot became a traitor, which I'm hoping most of you know that story. Uh, You notice here, though, also that there are two Judases. Some people uh, don't realize that or don't pick up on that. You have Judas, the son of James, and then you have Judas, who is called Iscariot. Iscariot means um, a man who is from Carioth, a place. So it's like saying Judas, who's the son of James, and you have this Judas who comes from that land over there. And so just a differentiation, because they didn't use last names like we do today, or middle names. And so here we have two Judases, the last one on this list became a traitor. And so for the catechism of the 11th day of Christmas, it's uh, the day that's uh, remembering um, who these 11 apostles are. Let's go back to the 12 days of Christmas for a moment. Uh, The 12 days of Christmas, um, for most people, they believe begins on December 25th, which is Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And it goes all the way through 12 days, and then after the 12th day, it goes into a day called Epiphany. Epiphany, that word means revelation. It means that uh, God has been revealed to the world. Uh, Many people around the world, Epiphany, that day, is the day of the the Magi, uh, the day when the Magi, who were um, astrologers probably, where we get the word magician from, where they came and presented gifts to Jesus after his birth. And it showed that he was not just the king of the Jews, but he was coming for all mankind. Jesus is God. And so for many, Epiphany uh, is that day of celebrating. And we have King's Day and different festivities that go on around the world. Um, For others, this day of Epiphany, uh, some look to it as the day of baptism. It's when they look when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan and the Holy Spirit came on him in the form of a dove. And God to the Father spoke out from heaven, saying, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so that was the revelation that this man, who was born at Christmas, but became a man and now began his calling, and God called out and said, This is my Son. And so for many people, it's a day of baptizing people, actually in parts of the world, different countries, people go into the jump into the icy cold waters um, and, and have different things that they do relating to baptism that day. So you have the 12 days of Christmas, for us December 25th for 12 days, and then Epiphany, which is uh, on the other end of those 12 days. Western churches celebrate Christmas on the 25th, and Epiphany on January 6th, or King's Day. And the period between that time is known as the 12 days and nights of Christmas. Other cultures, though, um, have different customs. Although uh, most in the Eastern Orthodox Church today use the Western calendar, those who are in a Greek Orthodox Church still use a different calendar. So they celebrate Christmas on January 7th, and their Epiphany then would be on January 19th. Latin American cultures, some of them celebrate Epiphany as Three Kings Day, and that's what they call it, and they give gifts, or get gifts on January 6th instead of on Christmas Day. Other cultures will give one gift per day during the 12 days of Christmas all the way up to Epiphany. Uh, This tradition really has never caught on here in in the United States. Um, We stick more with the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day uh, celebrations. 
But uh, now understanding all that, uh, let's go back to the 11th day of Christmas for a moment. Um, so the Catholic Church uses these 12 days of Christmas to have feast and remember certain things like the children who died and the whole uh, by Herod during Christmas and, and different um, saints and so on. Um, just for your information, the 11th day uh, today, many celebrate Elizabeth Seton, um, sh who the Catholic Church um, calls a saint, who started the first uh, Catholic schools here in America and was known as becoming the first American saint. And there's even a St. Elizabeth Seton Catholic Church I see in Naperville, not too far from where we're located. Okay, I'm just sharing some of this for knowledge, but uh, uh, I want us to go and read uh, two scriptures here together before we close. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, it tells us there's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. I, uh, as I mentioned, what people do around the world and the traditions that happen, and I like just sharing uh, these things with with the people like you and talking about them this time of year. But when we mention that other traditions hold on to people as saints, uh, I just want us to recognize that God calls us all. It says here, uh, we're all called. It says there is one body. Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus, which we've talked about already. One spirit, just as you were called to one hope. We're all called into that hope when we're called. Uh, we're all part of the body of Jesus Christ. And that's one body. It's not a separate body for these people and a separate body for those people. No, we're all called into one body. Together we all serve one Lord, not different ones, one Lord. There is one faith that we all, as believers all follow. There's one baptism that we are all baptized into Jesus Christ. Not to baptize into Paul and this person and that. No, no, no. We are, it's one baptism. We serve one God. We're all part of that one faith. But it goes on to say here, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2, to the church in Corinth that Paul also wrote to. He said, which is in Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling, with all who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Paul's writing this letter, and this is part of the introduction to that letter that he wrote, and he's talking to the church. He's saying there, the church there in Corinth, uh, to the people who have been sanctified, people who have allowed God's presence to come into their lives and to be used by God. He says, you are the saints by calling with all who in every place, not just them, but all who call in every place, who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. We all serve the same Lord. We are all called. We are all called to be sanctified, not just forgiven, but be used and filled by God, baptized by his Holy Spirit. Spirit. We are all, we are the saints. Praise God. And uh, not just a few individuals, and not just people who we think were extraordinary in this world. We're all extraordinary because we have an extraordinary God, a God who doesn't live just around us, but in us, if we let him in, a God who will change not only the world, but us, if we allow him. All who call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I praise God for all you saints out there. And anybody who isn't, I, I ask you to know Jesus Christ as your Lord. Let him in. He wants to be your Lord. Let's pray together tonight. Lord, we just thank you so much for your faithfulness, your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you are doing. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new every day. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. And that, Lord, that you have a calling for all of us and that you are seeking us all out. That your desire is for us all to be saved. I praise you and invite you to come in and be Lord and help us, Lord, to lead others, point others to you. 
Lord, sanctify us through and through, that we would be holy, we would be yours. Lord God, we praise your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight for this uh, short Bible study, just thinking about uh, the Christmas and not only the day that Jesus was born, but the celebration that's continuing around the world. If you're not familiar with all the 12 days of Christmas and the things that are happening around the world, I encourage you to study it some more. Look things up and see how other people are celebrating. And the celebration of the birth of Jesus is still going on today. It didn't end last week. And, um, and we're looking forward to the epiphany when we all celebrate that Jesus came for all of us. Not just the Jews, but Gentiles as well. All right, thanks for joining us tonight. God bless you. Remember, God loves you, and so do we.